This time I'd like to welcome uh, head coach Eric Musselman from University of Arkansas Razorbacks, the number eight seed in the West Region. Coach, uh, second time in a row he's brought Arkansas to Wells Fargo Arena in Des Moines. If you have any questions throughout the tournament, basketball contact Mike Kaywood immediately to my left. Coach, welcome back to Des Moines. Thanks, Mike. It's, the it's the second time for me in Des Moines, but one was with Nevada and one was with correct. That's Arkansas. Correct. Your outlook on tomorrow's game. Uh, obviously, Illinois, any, any team in this tournament's really good. And uh, Illinois presents a lot, of, a lot of issues that we have to discuss as a team. Um, you can start with number zero, Terrence Shannon, who's one of the most versatile players in all of college basketball. He's an excellent downhill player. Can stretch the defense out with threes. They're long. Um, excellent rebounding team, one of the best shot blocking teams in the country. Um, and then Matthew Mayer. It's just a really interesting side note that uh, both you know Mayer and and Shannon we've played before in the NCAA tournament, although they were with different teams. One with with Baylor and and one with with uh, Texas Tech. This time we'll take questions. Please raise your hand. We have a microphone holder your way. Only appropriate. We start up front here on the aisle. <laughs> I guess the other guy wasn't cutting it, or they, they replaced him or something? Okay. Okay. Hey, Eric, is, uh, you're supposed to identify yourself. Bob Holt, Arkansas Democrat Gazette. Um, I had a two-parter. Well, one was, you, you know, you're, you have a history, including this season, of doing really well, um, you know, winning games when you have, a, you know, a little extra time to prepare. Well, what do you think is the key to that? What, what goes into that? Maybe I should have been a football coach. Um I, I just, you know, I, I think from a preparation standpoint, there's a lot of things. I mean, one, um, you know, players have to retain whatever you talk about. And, um, you know, we have had some pretty decent success with time, but, um, you know, Illinois has had the same amount of time and, and uh, they're, they're, you know, really well coached. Um, their offense is actually something that you, you, you kind of need a little bit of time because they're spread – um, they'll they'll run a blind pig action, which is an old Phil Jackson uh, backdoor type action, and they really try to get the ball to the elbows and the nail with their four or five men, and then they run a lot of cutting action off that. So, um, you know, we've needed this time to prepare for them and to learn their personnel as well. Um, you, you look at your – to me, your all season and Illinois seasons have kind of followed similar trajectories. You guys were both – ranked in preseason poll. They got as high as 16. I think you guys were as high as nine. You, you had some roster issues with injuries. They had a guy leave the team. Uh, you had some tough losses. Ultimately, you won enough to get here. Kind of what have you thought about their – and you both have a lot of young players and some older guys. What, what have you thought about the similarities, the trajectories to get here that you two have both endured? Yeah, I, I would say, Bob, that um, any of the eight, nine seeds – across the board other than maybe uh, Florida Atlantic because they're a little bit of an outlier. But I think anytime there's an 8-9 seed um, and it's Power 5 involved, which is usually probably, you know, 90% of those 8-9 seeds, I think you're going you're gonna to see teams that, um, you know, have some, some, some peaks and some valleys. And, um, you know, that's certainly been the case with, with us, with, with the injuries and, and – uh, you know, being one shot or one possession away from from more than a few other wins that, that we potentially could have had, but but we also knew when we when we had a roster of, of thirteen with six freshmen um, that that there were going to be some ups and downs, and and then when you have the injury and six of your twelve really are freshmen, that's that's uh, that's kind of to be expected, and and I do still think that. We're still evolving and we're still improving. I really, truly believe that, that, um, you know, hopefully tomorrow we'll be a better team than we were against Texas A&M. I'm going to go to the right side, the aisle. Do you have a question? Hey, Coach. Uh, Todd Richardson with ESPN Arkansas. I know you enjoyed going out to San Francisco last year. Your mom got to make that and um, just because of your time out there. But how nice is it to just be six hours away from Fayetteville considering you guys played in Buffalo and San Francisco last year? Yeah, I mean, we hope that, that – um, we hope, Ty, that we have a, a really good showing. Um, you know, Champagne's an hour closer than, than we are, but 
both programs are close enough that, that, that somebody could drive to. Um, our fans have, have traveled really well in the past and, and hope that, that that continues for us tomorrow. Other questions? Okay, stay on the left and we'll go across the aisle to the right afterwards. Eric, you coached here before in the NCAA tournament, but when you were a G League coach or D League or CBA, did you, was Iowa, did you play those guys? Iowa Energy, yeah. Nick yeah. Nurse was a coach. Okay. He's now coaching Toronto. Yeah, well, what's it like? Obviously, that's a different dynamic, you know, uh, pro ball coming here. Kind of, what was, what was your experience like as a pro coach here? And I guess you know your way around Des Moines a little bit. I really don't, but um, <laughs> okay. I mean, as a coach, you just, especially at the pro level, you kind of come in and play the game and leave. And then one other Illinois. I mean, you guys have good size, obviously, but they're really big. I mean. Um, they they got guards as big as you guys do. What what do you think of their height and how that could impact the game? And maybe if if you, if you guys can get it going up and down a little bit more, maybe you could you could negate that. Well, I think Illinois is a really good offensive transition team. There's no doubt about that. Um, but they do have great size. I think when you look across the board, you know they can block a shot at every position. That's a little bit unique um, to play a team that one through five can can alter shots. And and when you put together a roster. Uh, with length, you know, that's one of the things that you want to do. That's one of the advantages that you have is try to make people shoot over the top of you. Um, you know, they have a, a point guard in Shannon who's who's got great size and, and great length, and Anthony Black has, you know, great length as well. And, um, you know, both teams, I feel, are going to try to get out in, in offensive transition. They probably uh, execute the shot clock a little bit longer than we do. Um, having said that, transition defense probably going to be important for both teams. I'm going to go across the right here. Go ahead. Scott Ritchie with the Champagne News. Is that, you mentioned Terrence Shannon and Matthew Meyer. Is there any other Illinois player that's maybe stood out to you as you've looked into them a little deeper the last few days? I mean, I like, you know, I, I, I really like the roster. I mean, Epps has done a great job. I know he's out for a short time. Um, but he's a guy as a, as a freshman that can score the basketball. He's 10 points a game. Another freshman in Ty Rogers who plays really, really hard, great loose ball getter, can beat people off the bounce, uh, gets extra possessions for him by how hard he plays. 42 inside, great spin move, loves to spin baseline off either block. Um, you know, Melendez, you know, obviously can make a three, uh, does a great job basket cutting, uh, has had some spectacular dunks from the from the right corner. Um, so yeah, I mean they're they're <laughs> that's everybody. I don't know who I'm missing, but I mean you if you want to ask about a special guy I'll, or particular guy, I'll probably tell you what some specifics on him. But off the top of my head, that's uh, you know that's some of the things that that we're aware of and from watching them play. We have three minutes left in this session. We're going to go back in the corner here, Coach. On the right side. Hey, Eric. Eric Olson, uh, Associated Press, a ghost from uh, your Rapid City Thriller days. <laughs> What's up, Eric? <laughs> hey, uh, I was looking over your guys, um, kind of your long list of support staff. Uh, it's like you got about, it seems like about 16 or 17 folks uh, on your support staff. Is that kind of the new trend in, in college basketball going forward? Because uh, that's a pretty sizable staff versus, you know, I think Illinois had fewer than a dozen. Well, we put everybody on our website. I'm not, I don't know about everybody else, but we have GAs and everybody on there. But um, certainly with, with the way um, college basketball is going, um, you know, right now we're trying to get ready for, for Illinois, but there, there's also a whole other aspect of, you know, the portal. Um, and, uh, you know, there's there's – people in our conference doing home visits right now while we're trying to get ready uh, to play and perform well in this tournament. So um, there's, a, there's a reason for, uh, you know, we're tr we try to be at the forefront of analytics. Um, so we have a couple guys on staff that do that. Certainly our GAs are really important to us as, as, uh, as guys that can rebound for guys. So, uh, But we tried to model it much off – how an NBA team does with specific roles and responsibilities. Okay, we're going to go back to the aisle here. 
We got one more question after this. We'll close it out. Okay, Eric. Obviously, obviously, AB, Nick, and, and Jordan all came in with a lot of hype. How have you? And Nick, you know, has been in and out of the lineup now. But how have you felt those three have played and and done with all the expectations and everything they had to deal with, and then how how they've played this season? Yeah, I mean, I think all three of them have played really, really well. And um, you know, obviously, you mentioned Nick, who's who's uh, been in and out of the, the lineup, and and he's continuing to get his rhythm. Um, that's really hard on a, on any player at any level, uh, let alone a you know a, a player that playing in the SEC. And uh, Jordan's done a great job. He plays so hard. He can play three different positions for us. Uh, Anthony's you know been an All SEC player. Um, so I think all three of those guys have done a great job for us. I mean we, you know, three guys that have started most of the year for us when they've been available. Um, not many not many programs. Uh, you know, have started three freshmen um, like we have, again, for the majority of the season. Obviously, some guys been in and out based on matchups and so on and so forth. But um, I think those guys done a great job. They're playing in the NCAA tournament, uh, three freshmen that will have a big role for us uh, tomorrow afternoon. Time for one final question. We're going to go on the right side of the aisle. You kind of brought up recruiting there, and I'm assuming you're referencing Chris Beard, who just got hired at Ole Miss. I remember Coach Pittman was talking about prior to their bowl game against Kansas, the balancing of the portal and bowl prep. How do you as a head coach balance still recruiting, still focusing on that, and getting ready for Illinois tomorrow? Well, the number one objective is I, – I really wasn't referring to, to Coach at all. There was three other – SEC schools that have done an in-home visit with someone, so it wasn't it wasn't him. Um, our job right now is to try to figure out a way to beat Illinois. That that that's our job. Having said that, we did have a meeting yesterday um, amongst a bunch of Illinois prep. Um, we did have a, a, a recruiting meeting because you have to, and it's it's the timing of it. Not quite sure how it came about where. Um, Teams are all playing. You know, you work all year long for this time. No different than last year. I mean, I remember doing five Zooms. I think it was five, maybe four before we played Gonzaga the night before up until maybe 11, 15, 11, 30 at night doing Zooms when you're trying to make an Elite Eight and you're playing in a Sweet 16 game. But that's how the rules are, and recruiting is a huge portion of our job. And so uh, to say that you're not doing any of it right now would probably not be true. Thank you very much, Coach. Best Thanks, of luck.